Obama. We're joined now from Washington by U.S. Republican Congressman Doug Lamborn. He chairs the House Subcommittee, which is looking into the environmental impact of Keystone XL. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, Congressman. You are welcome. Give us the quick pitch for Keystone. Why do you think it is, to use our Prime Minister's phrase, a no-brainer for uh, President Obama to approve this thing? Well, the majority of Americans, if you listen to polls, agree that it should be built. The governors in the affected states believe it should be built. The House of Representatives is already on record in the past as having approved it. And a majority of senators have come out in favor of it. So you put that all together, the only person now standing in the way is the president himself. And I want to say that because I want to affirm to our Canadian friends that the Americans and Congress and governors do want this. So if, God forbid, it doesn't happen, blame the president. Please don't blame the rest of us. We want to see this happen. Doug, uh, we've just heard uh, and we just learned that the U.S. House Energy Panel has approved this Keystone bill to bypass uh, President Obama. Can you, can you walk us through the mechanics and what the likelihood is now that it, it, the uh, legislation can actually pass both, uh, both houses of Congress? Well, that's a key committee. The other committee that's dealing with this, there's, there's actually several, but Natural Resources will vote on this next week. Okay. I anticipate every one of the committees and the House itself to pass this. Now, in the Senate, they'll have to get over a 60-vote filibuster, most likely, and whether it can do that or not, and whether it would have two-thirds in each House to override a veto, that is still an open question. So tell us, so is this thing just going to die then because filibuster is going to be very controversial? And couldn't President Obama just veto this bill in the end anyway? Well, he could, and it would take two-thirds of both the House and the Senate to override a veto. However, we want to put pressure, we want to demonstrate to the President that there is consensus in Congress, and we are divided on a number of issues, but to have consensus on an issue this big, I think, will speak loudly to the President. Now, Congressman, you and other advocates of Keystone XL say, well, Canada and the U.S. were great friends, were great allies, are interested in But isn't that just kind of uh, feel-good talk? I mean, this is business. You guys want to get oil as cheaply as you can. We want to get as much as our oil. Uh, so why would we want to tie ourselves even more closely to you, our only oil customer? Well, it's true that, that you want to sell and we want to buy. However, it does go deeper than that. North America and let's throw Mexico in as well. If we work together, we can become less dependent on the Middle East for our resources. That's good in a number of ways. They don't always have our interests in mind, whereas we have no doubt, never for a split second, that Canada's and U.S. interests are basically the same. So putting us secure and, and free of the pressure from the Middle East is a big deal here. Congressman, of course, uh, it's environmental concerns that's at the center of this debate, that it's going to lead to more greenhouse um, gases. What's your response to that? Even the State Department came out and said that the alternatives would create just as many or more carbon dioxide emissions. If you have to truck the oil in, uh, uh, truckload by truckload, or you send it, to China after go, taking a pipeline to the Pacific Coast and going over there tanker by tanker. That creates more carbon dioxide emissions. This resource will be developed. C Canadians are not stupid. They're, they're going to act in their best interest. This will be developed one way or the other. The pipeline is actually a better uh, way to do it from a carbon dioxide perspective. Just once again, though, I mean, an article in one of our top papers here the other day, the Globe and Mail said a rejection of Keystone could be great for Canada because it would force us to start selling the oil to China at presumably a higher world price. What do you think when you hear people say that? I don't know how to judge that because I don't know the price that the Chinese would be willing to pay. I know that they're dealing with all kinds of suppliers other than China, so uh, other than Canada, so I don't know the answer to that. That's a great question, though. Congressman, before we go, uh, we have to ask you about your, your reaction that they may be about to arrest a suspect in, the, in those terrible Boston Marathon bombings. Give us an idea of what the atmosphere, though, is in Washington. We also had this scare over an envelope apparently sent to the president. 
Well, everyone's heart goes out to those who, uh, the surviving families of the victims and those who were tragically injured. Uh, it's such a horrible thing when people were there just to celebrate life and, and to live life to the fullest. So we want to bring whoever did it to justice. We want to apprehend. And I hope that this leads to some solid evidence so we know where this came from. We can prevent it in the future. Thank you very much indeed, Congressman.